Good morning and welcome to One Truth with Lisaidi. And here we are building families for eternity. I am so delighted that you have joined me today. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you click in the subscribe button, turn on the notifications by clicking the bell button below so that you won't miss out of any of the One Truth presentations. And here we will keep you motivated and encouraged daily. Why has God spared your life this month? Why has he accorded you another opportunity to live on? Why you? This past month swallowed many great people, influential lives, men and women who feared and trusted God. We witnessed the close of their chapters. But it is not the departed I am concerned about. You and I that are still alive. Some of us survived the COVID. Some survived the road accidents. Some of us gave birth to beautiful children in the past month. Many mothers never lived to see the joys of childbirth. They died in labor. Is it possible that God is giving you another chance to live on? Now, what is really the purpose of life? And are you living according to the expectations of the purpose of life? This is what we are going to be covering and join me in the presentation. This is what we are going to cover. As we open up our subject looking at the purpose of life, why is it God and men need an explanation of their lives? Let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. What does it mean that God is a rewarder? And we also have to understand what is it that it means to seek the Lord. Let's look at the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 and 7. It says that, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous men his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. We also look at that. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So as we are looking at what does it mean to diligently seek the Lord, this is the time that we are to seek the Lord while he is still found. And also looking at the book of Psalms 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that hook uprightly. So now the question is, do you hook uprightly upon the Lord? Given an opportunity to ask from the Lord, what is it that you will desire that God should do for you? First, let's look at the example of Elisha. Elisha asked of the double portion of Elijah's spirit and he was granted. When we look at the miracles that he performed, it was double the size of the miracle that Elijah performed. And also looking at this man in the book of Luke by the name Simeon, he was a devout man and he was promised that he will not see death without seeing the consolation of Israel. So this was his cry. So when Jesus Christ was brought in the temple, he says, now, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace, for I have seen the consolation of Israel. And also coming to this man by the name Solomon, he asked for wisdom, and God granted him wisdom. And with his wisdom, the question is, was he happy in his life? And one time as I was having a start with this young man, I asked him a question. If God today asks you, what is that I should do for you and I will do it for you now, what would you ask? And he says, I'll ask that God should give me money. If I've got money, I'll be the most happiest person ever. But now the question is, was Solomon happy in his life? And what kind of possessions did he have? And with all the possessions that he had, did they bring happiness in his life? Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 3 going down. I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. 
I caught me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. Verse 8 I gathered me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provisions. I gave me men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments, and that of all sorts. Verse 10. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I will be held not mine heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Now he is thinking, if I will have to die today, who is going to look after my possessions? And which is a strike of many parents today. They are wondering if I will die, who is really going to carry forward my Lakers? Whatsoever that I have built, who is going to stand in my position and make sure that all these things do not fall? And also if I will have to die, will they not come and fight over my wealth that I have managed to accumulate in all these years? This was a worry to his soul. And how about you today? Are you not worried about all your positions that you have? If you are thinking about them, do you have a replacement who is going to cover up when you die? This is a worry to many parents today. Now as we are looking at Solomon, he also thought, perhaps I will have many women, I'm going to be happy. But now the question is, was he really happy in his entire life? Let's look at verse 17 on the book of Ecclesiastes. It says, Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. So as he is looking at everything else, he says, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. And therefore he hated life. Let's look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. While the wind is itself invisible, it produces effects that are seen and felt. So the work of the Spirit upon the soul will reveal itself in every act of him who has felt its saving power. When the Spirit of God takes possession of the heart, it transforms the life. Now the question is, what can we see and how can we notice if God does really exist? By God's grace, I look forward to seeing you on the next presentation. For those who might be having questions or prayer requests, One True Prayer Pen Group is always ready to pray with you and to pray for you. You can always send through on our One Truth WhatsApp number plus 2762-165-5609. Or you can always send straight to our email address. The link is just below on the description. And also don't forget to subscribe.